In this video, I will show you how you can do a numerical analysis of the welfare with a tax. Specifically, we will look at if we have a separate demand and supply and we impose a tax, how we can find the new supply curve and the equation of the new supply curve. And then we will determine what is the welfare with the tax, specifically what is the consumer surplus, producer surplus, tax revenue and debt weight loss with the tax. And last but not least, I will show you who has the burden of the tax. Is it more with consumers or more with producers? Let's start with the equations for demand and supply. Let's take quantity demanded is equal to 20 minus 2p and quantity supplied is equal to p minus 1. If we take those numbers, we can draw this problem, P and Q. We now need to see where the intercept of these curves is and where the equilibrium is. So if we flip these curves around, we get for demand P equals 10 minus Q over 2. And for supply, P equals Q plus 1. So we have an upward sloping demand supply that starts at 1 here, so that's our supply. And we have a downward sloping demand which starts at 10 here and based on the 20 here cuts the axis here at 20. Now we need to find the equilibrium before the tax was imposed. And to do so, we set these two equal to each other, so we get 20 minus 2p equals p minus 1. Rearrange, we get 3p equals 21, so p equals 7, q, q equals 6, by plugging it back in to this equation. So we get 6 and 7. Now, let's assume we impose a tax of 3. If we impose a tax of $3, then we need to shift the supply curve upward by $3. If we shift the supply curve upward by $3, we can get a new supply, which is a supply plus tax, and we can put it in this format. So we enable it supply plus tax and this supply is equal to P equals Q plus 1, which is the original supply, plus tax. So we get, since the tax is 3, we get Q plus 4 here. So now we can draw this in here. We have 4 and we have the supply plus tax here. This leads to a new point here where we have the demand intersecting with this new supply curve. Let's calculate this point because we will need it in the analysis later. Let's do that here. Supply plus tax equal to demand. So we have Q plus 4 is equal to 10 minus Q over 2. Let's put this to the other side. Plus Q over 2. Now let's put the 4 on the other side. Minus 4 and we get 3 over 2q equals 6. Okay, I don't like this fraction, so I multiply by 2. 3q equals 12. Now I divide by 3, and I get q equals 4. So, quantity here is 4. And I can plug it back into either 
this new supply, and I get four plus four is eight, so I get a price of eight, which is the price consumers pay is equal to eight. Note this price is not the market equilibrium because this price consumers pay is not the same as the price producers get. There will be a gap and that gap will be exactly the tax. So we need to calculate what is the price producers get. How much money, if I'm producing this good, how much money am I actually seeing? To find out what is the price producers get, we need to go down and look at where this quantity we found with the tax, the quantity four, intersects with our supply. And we can already see it will be above four based on the graph, which is not perfectly to scale, but is close enough for this purpose. So let's calculate this point. There's essentially two ways of calculating this point. The first is we know we shifted this curve by the amount of tax, so by three. And so eight minus three is five. The second way is we plug in four into this equation here. If you plug in four, a quantity of four plus one gives us the price, four plus one is five. So we got the price suppliers get is equal to five. Okay, now we can think about the welfare in this case that we calculated all the relevant points we need. Let's start with consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is defined as the area above the price consumers pay and below demand. The price consumers pay is eight. Demand is this line here. So this is consumer surplus. Similarly, producer surplus is defined as below the price producers get and above supply. So below the price producers get, above supply is this triangle here. So that's producer surplus. Tax revenue is given by the wedge in between. So that's tax revenue. And we can clearly see that the tax, the wedge in between is three, the amount of tax times the quantity consumed. So for each unit, we get a certain amount and we can calculate this area too. The last area is this little triangle here, which is the dead weight loss. Okay, so I have four areas to calculate. Let's calculate these four areas. Let's start with consumer surplus. So if we look at this triangle, we know it's this distance times this distance over two because the triangle of formula. So this distance here is from eight to 10. So that's two. And this is from zero to four. So that's four times one half is a triangle is equal to four. So we get a consumer surplus of four. Produce a surplus. Same thing again. We start at one here, go all the way up to five. So that's four times from here all the way over here. That's again four times one half and we get eight. Tax revenue we have a tax of three we consume four three times four equals twelve and last but not least that weight loss we have this length here is three the amount of tax between five and eight so three and we have this distance here and that's from four to six. So we have three times 
four to six is two, times one half because it's a triangle, and we get three. So the deadweight loss or welfare loss from imposing this tax is three. Okay, now that we calculated total welfare with the tax, we can look at who has the main burden of this tax. Who is the main payer of this tax? There are several ways to calculate who gets the burden of this tax. The way I'll do it here requires that you have a linear demand and linear supply. Specifically, the approach I will take here is I will look at the slope of demand and the slope of supply. If the demand is flatter than the supply, then we will have a main burden of the tax with suppliers. If supply is flatter than demand, then the main burden of the tax is with consumers. So let's check that out. So let's get the slope of demand. The slope of demand, and I already erased it, can be seen from these equations if we flip them. So let me quickly rewrite them if they're flipped. Demand, we have P equals 10 minus Q over 2. And supply, we have P equals Q plus 1. OK, so the slope for demand, we look into this demand curve with P equal to something. And we look at what is Q multiplied here. Well, first we see it's minus Q. OK. Um, that's fine. We don't worry about the negative sign here. And then it's Q divided by 2. So 1 Q divided by 2, so the slope is minus 1 half. And slope supply. We look at the supply curve here. And what is Q multiplied here with? It's multiplied by 1, 1 times Q, so the slope is 1. Now, if we look at the steepness of this curve, we need to take absolute values of that. So we get absolute value of this is 1 half. And absolute value of this is 1. Now, the smaller the value, the flatter the curve. And the flatter the curve, the less of the burden of this tax will be borne. This means supply is steeper. Because supply is steeper, suppliers will bear the burden of the tax. They're the main ones paying for this tax. Thank you for watching.